to victory over the Equal Rights Amendment. She, uh, her, her program. The movement she organized to stop the RA was actually called Stop the RA. In 1990, she founded the Republican National Coalition for Life with a specific mission of protecting the pro-life plan in the Republican Party platform. The World Almanac named her one of 25 most influential women in America during the years from 1978 to 1985. And when Richard R. Amber, the publisher of St. Louis Globe Democrat, presented her with the Women of Achievement Award in 1963, he said, Phyllis Schlafly stands for everything that has made America great and for those things that would keep it that way. George Gilder said in 1987, when the histories of this era are seriously written, Phyllis Schlafly will take her place among the tiny number of leaders who have made a decisive and permanent difference. She changed the political landscape of her country. In fact, by the measure of the odds she faced and overcame, Schlafly's achievement excels all others. She won in part because she is one of the country's best speakers and debaters and the best pamphleteer since Tom Paine. <laughs> she won because of her indefeasible energy and willpower mobilizing women in state after state. She is best known as an advocate for the dignity and honor that we as a society owe to the ro role of full-time homemaker. And now I'd like to present Mrs. Schlafly, who is often called the sweetheart of the silent majority. <laughs> presented this 31st day of January, 2009. Thank you, thank you Mary Ann, and thank you, friends. I'm very honored to get the Henry Hyde Award. He was a great Illinois leader, a great national leader of the pro-life movement, and a great friend. And to see this big crowd here today has really charged my batteries. <laughs> it's uh, been worth the, the play trip to come up here just to see that you're all out to carry on the battle uh, to protect innocent human life. It is the most important issue in the country today, and we need dedicated warriors like you. The battle to protect unborn babies goes on in many different venues, and each of us has our mission in this battle. And one part of the battle I took on, as Mary Ann kindly mentioned, was to make sure that the Republican Party platform is pro-life. And at the very first Republican National Convention after Roe v. Wade, which was in Kansas City in 1976, we dared to challenge the mighty U.S. Supreme Court head on. Republicans adopted a plan to protest the Supreme Court's intrusion into the family structure, and we pledged to seek enactment of a constitutional amendment to restore protection of the right to life for unborn babies. And every Republican platform since then has had a pro-life plan. 